Good afternoon, good morning everybody, and welcome to another edition of Journey Becoming a Head Coach. I'm your host, Jeff Freeman, and again, thank you for all the love and support. Um, again, if you like this channel, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, today I'm going to cover um, what we do with our inside zone out of our pistol front, and not only that, I'm going to cover kind of how we make our inside zone, our outside zone, and our fly sweep all kind of work together. So just kind of follow along with me. I'll show you a little bit of our even front. Last year we saw mainly 4-4. Four, four cover three, uh, cover one, where we just have you know high free safety, everyone else man under. That's pretty much what we saw all year long. We had one team that gave us an odd front. So again, trying to prepare for this year, we'll see what we get, but chances are, I assume we're probably gonna get mostly a uh, four or an even front. Um, again, we were tight end based a lot last year. This year, we're gonna kind of spread it out a little bit more. So we'll see what happens, how they try to treat us, whether they try to stick with this cover three kind of looking shell where they walk the safety down, or if they walk out their will linebacker or their backside rover linebacker. Not exactly sure how they're gonna treat us yet again. We haven't had our season, so we'll see. Um, we go by account, covered, uncovered system. So pretty easy stuff as far as that's concerned. So if we're running our base inside zone, again, you got the zero, which for us, obviously he's gonna to count toward the mics. We got our one and our two. So we get a double team backside. We're gonna try and bang, bend, or bounce it. We're gonna read the last man on the line of scrimmage. So again, real simple on this front. So we should get a double team here. Manned up, manned up. Now we do, we will run our fly game out of this. So you will get some fly motion out of us. Cause again, we are evolving from a split back fly team to a more spread fly look. So you will get fly motion from us. So that gives us an opportunity to really play games with this backside backer. We can motion him, we can motion him and kick out the end and get a double team here. We can motion him and kick out the Sam linebacker if we really want to. So again, we get to play games by getting an extra blocker in motion. But as far as base inside zone, this would be our base inside zone blocking scheme. If we didn't bring anybody, that's what we would do. Now, on a side note out of this, we tend to run to the boundary a little bit more because then that gives us two double teams. So for example, if we run into the boundary, Let's just say that this is a boundary style here. We're on the hash on this side, hash over here. Then what that allows us to do is to get a double team, another double team up there, and then just one man off edge, and we're reading this end back here. So we'll play games, we'll run in and out of the boundary, but if we're in the middle of the field and we're calling it, and I'm just saying, hey, we're running inside zone to the right. Again, this is our base run look. And if we're running it to the right, we're going to run it at that three tech and we're going that route and we are going to leave him alone. Now, some of you might say a lot of this time there's those games by the end where they get the automatic pull read where he's going to do this and then they're going to come off the edge. We have pre-snap reads that we have built in for these two guys on the edge. Stock blocking is great and all and there is need for stock blocking, but I like to set it up to where we have, we can block six. We can read number seven. We have access throws to eight. So these guys are running routes more often than not. So for example, on this side, pre-snap, we're looking at it. They're running bubble until the snap happens. Once they see he's handing it off, then they'll go and go block and help with our run game. But until that time, they're running bubble on this side. We're running a simple key screen on this side. So if these backers cheat at any point in time, our QB is going to read up basically like a book from left to right, and he's going to go, okay, do I have leverage here? I got leverage here. I'm throwing the key screen now. It doesn't make a call. doesn't make an audible. doesn't do anything. He's literally going to sit back, look at it, read left to right. If this is a safety or if this is that Will linebacker and he's cheated up right here and they're running that safety down, we're going to run that key screen now because we're going to get four yards and then we're going to move on to the next play. So again, we have built-in things to kind of adjust to what a defense wants to do. Same thing on this side. If that Sam backer cheats, we'll run bubble. If he's out, we'll run our base run play. So again, and we also can do it to where, again, when we want to bring that fly, he might just run a simple three-step slant. Because again, if we're running that fly, and you get this motion where all of a sudden he's backing off and you get that rotation, we're going to have an ability to catch them on the back side here. So that would be one of those post snap reads or an RPO style where he's reading the backer, the outside backer in the corner. The corner backs off, they rotate over, slide out, there's an open screen, snap, fake the handoff catch and just throw it. So again, we have things like that built in 
to where we can play games where we have an extra guy, we have an extra blocker, we have something extra to where we try to set ourselves up to where we have one more thing that the defense has to account for and one more thing where we believe that they can't account for it. So it makes things pretty easy for us. So we have things built in that we can play games with the outside backers. But in any case, say just inside, we're in the middle of the field, we're running inside zone, right? Again, he's blocking the two, he's blocking the one, these two are double teaming the one, he's hopefully getting up to the zero to the mic, and then he's taking a hard step to account in case there's some kind of slant game, he's off to the will. And then we have the read here, obviously the ride in the side, he comes off, he's either banging it through the A, he's uh, bending it backside to the backside A, or he's bouncing it out depending on what these tackles do. So we're either banging, bending, or bouncing. So that's the kind of the key in our inside zone. Now the nice thing is, you run inside zone, you might want to run outside zone. So just as a nice little complimentary play. And the nice thing is nothing changes for us with our count system. The only thing that changes is their footwork. So again, same kind of account. We're trying to make sure that we account for the zero, <coughs> the one, and the two. So now the only difference is his track's gonna be slightly different. He's gonna go the same way, except now he's gonna get a little bit more lateral. <coughs> Excuse me. Still not gonna block this backside end, except now he's gonna try and reach to the outside, pushing laterally. If he wants to go outside, fine, push him outside. Same thing here, trying to get that outside reach. Double team to the back sides, that mic, and then up to the will. So we have a double team here, double team there. Now the only difference again, we're trying to get to the outside. So he's gonna read the butt of this tackle. If he sees the tackle's butt, he will cut it up inside. If he sees the end's butt, then he's gonna bounce it outside. There's really only two cut system out of this one. We don't want him bending it back all the way inside. So he's just gonna read that end. If he sees the end's butt, because we set the edge, he's gonna bounce it outside. If he sees our tackle's butt, because he's pushing him out, then he's gonna cut it up underneath. So again, same count system. So it makes life really easy for these guys. So as far as up front, they're just like, okay, center comes up, calls the zero, 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 one, two, here we go, we're off and running. So it makes life really easy for us. And then if we're gonna go ahead and run our fly sweep, Again, the count stays the same, and you're gonna say, well, why are you counting? It's not zone, you're not reading, we're not. But at the same time, it makes it really easy for our linemen to understand, okay, well, we get upfield and inside zone, we wanna go lateral on outside zone, and then we wanna get out and up on the edge as fast as possible for the fly sweep. So we're gonna bring him across, and we can do a couple different things with the H. We can fake the inside zone, or we can say, you know what, on the snap of the ball, get out and go block the Sam Backer. So he can either have that assignment, or we can fake the inside zone if we want to keep these guys honest on the backside. But in any case, we get that off. So he's trying to get to that edge hard now. He's actually trying to get up on the edge and up to the mic. He's trying to now get to the tackle. We're just ripping through on our way to the will and he's ripping through either to the will or up to the free safety. So again, starting from inside zone where we're trying to get drive up the field to getting the outside zone where we're trying to be more lateral and now fly where we're saying, we're not even gonna bother really blocking you, you, or you. We're gonna get all five of our guys trying to block these five guys. And then we're gonna use either our slot or our H to block the Sam backer. And then obviously, our outside guys would have the corners on this. So it's a nice, simple progression going from an upfield push to a lateral push to a get to the edge as fast as you can and really hook everybody to get us up and running to either out here or out here. So it's a nice, simple progression to help out our offensive line as far as understanding a count system that helps them with three different types of runs that have three different goals, one being an A gap, A gap, B gap kind of style, one being a C slash D gap if we were to put an end out here, and then one we are just trying to get to the edge as fast as possible. And the easy, the other easy portion is we can run that middle of the field, we can run it boundary, we can run it to the field. The count doesn't really change or adjust for us, so that's another nice piece as far as that's concerned. So again, they can call deuce, they can call ace, 
to get any of those double teams that we want. Now as far as the scheme when you're getting an odd man front, again, the thing with the spread is what helps us and also kind of hurts us is obviously we don't really have a real deep edge. So you have more of this look, depending on what you got. So, and again, depending on what we had last year, we had one team that gave us an odd front. So I don't expect a lot of odd front this year, maybe next year when we have a full season. This year, most likely, we'll be lucky to play four or five games in California. So we'll see. I mean, actually, we're just hoping to get one game in, to be brutally honest. So we'll see what happens. But um, as far as an odd front is concerned, anything on the nose, again, would be a zero. So anything kind of here to here, anything inside the center, we're going to call a zero to really help that out. So now the one and the two and the three, or the one and the two ends up being the mic and here. So we're going to have, depending on what this nose is doing, obviously he's going to take his step. He'll take his step. We could have a double team up to the mic on this regard. Now, a lot of teams will pinch. And if that happens, then obviously your tackle's taking the number two here, and this is the number one. So he'll take his step and up to Will. So we might get one double team. We could get two, depending on if this guy's a really hard pincher. Then, I mean, we're going to wash him down inside for the most part. Some teams will slant him. Some teams will, you know, they'll play edge games or they'll two gap. I mean, two gap, then it's just, hey, big on big and do what you can. Same thing here. Could be big on big, do what you can as far as that's concerned. Or maybe they're slanting the nose. Again, that would be a kind of a pregame deal. But as far as a count is concerned, you have a zero, you have a one, you have a two. Tackle's in charge of the two. Guard would be in charge of the one. Nose could call or the center could call whether it could be a double team to this side, double team to this side, and you're off to the mic. And this could also be the same thing we're calling a double. And we're reading this backer yet again on the back side. Because again, you can't really read this guy because again, most of the time they're going to be a pinching style. If they're bigger bodies, then yeah, they could be two gappers. But more often than not, you're going to move out to the backer on this. And if he stays outside, obviously that's a give because you got five on five. We should be able, with the sixth guy being our H back, we should be fine. If one of these guys is coming down, again, we have that little cheat where we can bring this guy in motion and we can play games with that. Or if we're just going base, hey, we're running inside zone. If he's cheating, like he's going to blitz, again, if we don't put him in motion, we have that key screen. So if this quarterback sees him cheating to come down, well then, okay, we're just going to throw the key screen. Now again, if he's not, and we are going to go ahead and put him in motion, and he comes down hard, well then it just becomes the same simple read. If he goes flat down the line, pull and go. And then the quarterback's up on the free safety. If he comes hard towards the quarterback, then it's a give read. So the outside backer becomes the new read guy. Again, very simple, not trying to make it too hard for our linemen as far as covered, uncovered, and account system. And again, it works the same way with outside zone. Nothing changes for us, except now, instead of trying to push hard upfield, we're trying to get to his edge. And if he pinches, he's doing the job for us. If he pinches hard, he's doing our job for us on that, where we get to set that edge and he's coming hard. And if we run the fly, now we can have him kick out the sandbacker on inside zone. Or again, if this sandbacker is going to cheat and the team th and whoever team we're playing thinks they're going to get us on outside zone, go ahead, we're going to throw a bubble. And I would love for that safety to get it down there fast enough when we got a one-on-one -on -one block and we're throwing bubble, we'll get four yards and we'll move on to the next play. That's fine. Four yards is a success for us. Second and six is better than second and 10, second and 11, second and 12. So again, we'll get ahead on the sticks on that. And then lastly, again, if we run our fly and we give it, now it gets really easy for us because again, reading this Sam backer, we can have the H go out to the Sam backer, or if his job is to really get to the edge and he pinches, 
Guard takes over. He's off to the Sam. Mike centers off to the Mike. Nose is there, and we're not even blocking. Depending on what that Will does, our backside tackle might be going to Will, or he might be trying to cut off a free safety. He shouldn't get there. He shouldn't get there. He shouldn't get there. He shouldn't get there. Those four guys should not be able to get to our fly sweep coming off the edge. If they do, we're not meant to win, and these guys are D1 players. That's all i got to say on that front. So, uh, real simple count system. It works against an odd front, works against an even front, and again, it's three different plays, inside zone, outside zone, and our fly, where they know where they got to go, who they got to get to. They can call double teams if they want, and it's looks almost like the same scheme, but again, it's gonna look different when you watch it on film. You're gonna see us going upfield on the zone, going lateral on outside zone, and getting really hard to the edge on fly, and you're gonna think it's three different schemes, but really it's one simple count scheme with uncovered, covered rules, and we are making sure that we get the leverage, we get the double team, and we secure it by having pre-snap and post-snap reads. We're gonna block six, read seven, access eight. So we're going to always have an answer for what you're trying to bring and how you're trying to out leverage us. So real simple, real easy stuff to where an offensive line and an offense is going to understand what to do. And again, we can run it into the boundary. We can run it to the field. We can run it in the middle of the field. So um, that's my basic premise. That's our basic premise for inside zone where we can actually go from inside zone to outside zone to fly. So we can go all the way to the edge but we can bring it to where we just need to get one or two yards. Now, obviously also, we can change this and we can play games with this guy right here or here and we can attach them if we just wanna do like an inside zone give and we just need to get one or two yards. We can bring both these guys in and run a double tight look and still run the same scheme Except now, obviously, depending on where we're out on the field, where the defense is going to be, if it's a four-man front, some teams will try to treat it and still keep it in, especially if we're on the boundary side, they'll call strength to the field if they're that kind of team. And again, we still have the same basic premise for us. I mean, normally double tights, I would assume, my best guess would be we would get something similar to kind of like this, because again, you got double tights, we're kind of packed in the box. But again, if we're in this kind of formation, we're gonna definitely now have single up, double, double, off to the Sam, double, double, off to the Mike. We're not gonna block him, so it's get up to backer, step hard inside, and if they try to play games here, we either have two guys up to the will, or we can have him kind of peel off to the weak side safety, and boom, we're still off trying to get to the A gap. We're either banging it, bouncing it, or bending it back. So we still have that same accountability, same look, same read, and we don't even have to read them if we don't want. Again, we can just go right at the end and block him as well, and we're just gonna say, nope, you're not even reading, just hand it off. We need one to three yards, hand it off and go. So we can have an inside zone give. And again, outside zone doesn't change. Try to set the edge. Get up field, get up field, get lateral, let him get to the outside. But except now reading here, we read the, the end on the tight end. Or if it's in an odd front, we'd be reading the outside backer, or our back would be reading the outside backer if we're in an odd front. So again, trying to get outside, trying to get outside. So if we're reading that now, now he's reading here. If he sees the tight end's butt, cut it up. If he sees the sandbacker's butt, get up field. So again, another two-step goal. Again, several formations, different looks. Looks like a different play to the defense, but it's the same play for us. So again, thank you so very much for your support and your time. I hope you got something out of this. Um, if you got any comments or questions, go ahead and put them down. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And remember. Be great, push limits, and hold the line. I hope you all have a great weekend. I'll see you next Tuesday for Coaching Through COVID Part 2. Um, I covered November through uh, kind of May of last year of 2020. I'm going to cover June 
um, through uh, July. That's going to take its own little part because we get our first look at guidances, cohorts, how we can practice, what we can practice with, and then you know we'll move on to co coaching through COVID part three, which will be August through about uh, November. So look forward to that. I look forward to sharing with you our journey on that front. Um, and again, California, we have not had our football season yet. We are hoping, depending on if you're in the orange tier, you can play games as early as January 25th, which would be the 28th and 29th for freshmen in the, and varsity. So again, like, share, subscribe. Thank you for all the love and support, and I'll see you all very soon.